Good morning. Today we're going to talk about being a Christian at home. May the grace, peace, and love of Christ be with each of us as we begin our meditation this morning by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, which says, Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Seek it not her own. It is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. We could gain much by self-discipline in our home. We should make life as pleasant as possible for all. Cultivate respect in the speech. Preserve unity and love. Satan will have no power over us if we fully control ourselves in our homes. We must have the Spirit of God or we can never have harmony in our homes. We cannot cherish home affections with too much care. Love and respect is never too much. To make our home a small heaven is a blessing, and if the Spirit of the Lord dwells there, it will be a type of heaven. Everything that would tend to mar the peace and unity of the family circle must be repressed and eliminated. What we need to cultivate in our homes is kindness, love, the spirit of tenderness, forbearance. These are to be cherished. If one errs, the other should exercise Christ-like forbearance. Remember how we talked about long-suffering? And we saw how it supports with love the shortcomings of others? How it forgives and seeks to help others to find the correct path? I'm going to be very sincere. I wish I had learned this before starting my family. I wish I had truly known and had a relationship with Christ as I have today when my children were small. For you who is now starting your family, what a privilege. You can know and practice forbearance. Many times we live without love, we have no patience and we treat our family members in the same way duplicating in them our own shortcomings. We build a family full of trauma. Our lack of patience, courtesy, and forbearance is to blame. Blessed are those who before saying I do, learn what it means to be a Christian in the home. But not all is less for us who already have a family. If we manifest a spirit of tenderness, forbearance, and love, we will find that the same Spirit will be reflected upon us. If Christ indeed is formed within the hope of glory, there will be union and love in the home. Christ abiding in the heart of the wife will be in agreement with the Christ abiding in the heart of the husband. Both will be striving together for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for those who love Him. This will also be seen between the brothers and sisters. They will reflect the love they see in their parents. Tender affection should ever be cherished between husband and wife, parent and children, brothers and sisters. It is our duty the duty of everyone in the family to be pleasant, to speak kindly. A house with love in it, for love is expressed in words, looks, and deeds, is a place where angels love to manifest their presence and hallow the scenes by rays of light from glory. Love should be seen in the look and manners and heard in the tone of voice. Love in the tone of voice, in manners and actions should be seen in the husband towards the wife, the wife towards the husband, in parents towards their children, and in their children towards their parents. Self-control on the part of all members of the family 
will make home almost a paradise. Why again bring up self-control? Because many times it is in the home where we let loose. We feel no need to be patient, kind, or loving. Sometimes it may be that this is how we were brought up. Or maybe it's just because we feel so safe that we think we can do and say whatever at home. But here too, we need to practice self-control so that our home will be a pleasant place, almost a heaven. May we learn to be Christians in our home. And if your home is now empty, your children are grown. There is still time to speak to your children and ask them to forgive you. If your children are grown but still at home, we can still correct the mistakes made. While we still have life, we can always ask forgiveness and start over, learning together to exercise self-control, to treat each other kindly with forbearance. I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, I hope you have a lovely day.